AFT, AFL CIO, AFT Local 2121, and others referred to below. This constitutes a complaint filed with the Department of Education in connection with the failure of the Accrediting Commission for Community and Junior Colleges to investigate and respond to a complaint filed with it in the manner required by 34 CFR section 602.23, yeah. On April 30th, 2013, the California Federation of Teachers, AFT, AFL-CIO, AFT Local 2121, and nine present and past officers of CFT, AFT Local 2121, and the CFT's Community College Council filed two copies of a 280-page long complaint and third-party comment and supporting attachments of 847 pages with the ACCJC, the April 30th complaint. A copy was submitted to the U.S. Department of Education wow. along with the supporting evidence. The April 30th complaint raises serious issues about the ACCJC's compliance with its policies and the impartiality and integrity of the commission and its reliability for federal accreditation purposes. The April 30th complaint is directed not only at the ACCJC's Assessment of City College of San Francisco issued in July 2000, uh, 2012, but also its treatment of all community colleges in California. ACCJC responded to the April 30th complaint with the attached seven page long report on May 30th, 2013. ACCJC's report is incomplete and lacks sufficient detail to indicate that the ACCJC conducted a fair, equitable and unbiased investigation and processing right on. response declares the most of the allegations are not <laughs> perfunctory response declares that most of the allegations are not being addressed and not and none of the documentary evidence has been submitted a perfunctory, incomplete, untimely, and unbiased report by ACCJC. When ACCJC announced on May 30th, 2013, that it had conducted its own investigation, the complaint against it, complaints had no reason to expect anything besides a rejection. Given the nature and scope of the allegations documented in the complaint, still ACCJC's response is particularly contemptuous of its legal obligations Federal law demands that the commission review in a timely, fair, and equitable manner and apply unbiased judgment here, here. to complaints against itself. ACCJC violates each of these standards, not an unbiased review. First, the review is especially biased, even for an organization that is investigating itself. ACCJC's report notes that a complaint against the commission ordinarily considered by the ACCJC's president, but because the complaint makes allegations about the president, it had appointed the members of the executive committee to consider the issues contained. That's a conflict of interest. In the complaint and prepare this report. Yet the committee includes commissioners who, like the president, are the subject of complaints accu accusations. No one signed the report out. We assume the executive committee declared to be responsible for the report consists of those individuals serving in the positions identified by the executive committee in the ACCJC's bylaws. The commission's failure to have its executive committee actually sign the report or signify the identity of those who purportedly issued it seems to conflict with the federal requirement of a fair review by, for instance, not allowing us to fully examine the conflicts which may exist for signatories. According to the commission's bylaws, its chair, Cheryl Amador, serves as chair of the executive committee, and other members of the executive committee are apparently its vice chair, Stephen Kinsella, the chair of the budget and personnel committee, who is believed to be Frank Gornick, and apparently the former ACCJC chair, Michael Rota. All right, so we did not get a fair review of our complaints, and this is showing that. Shame! Shame! Yeah. Shame.